Ned, it is increasingly popular among scientists and many philosophers to assume that the human being, the human mind, consciousness, is entirely physical, being able to be represented by the brain, a, a view that is looked upon uh, very negatively by many people who come from a theological tradition and even some philosophers. How do you look at that question? Is the person all material? I think it's important to distinguish between two different questions. Is the person all material, and is the person, if all material, is the person essentially material? So here's, let me, I can explain this by going into the three different views on the mind-body problem. Okay. And, uh, so one view is dualism, which says that humans are essentially immaterial. Now, of course, on that, they're not material, they're not essentially material. A second view is called functionalism. It's the computer-oriented view of the mind. It's the, the, it's the view that um, humans are basically computers and the mind is basically uh, functioning um, like a computer program. On that view, humans may be material, but they're not essentially material. You can see this by, by, looking at, by thinking about an adder. What makes something an adder? Well, that it functions in a certain way. Now, it could function in that way even if it was made out of something immaterial. But what would be important is the function, right. not whether it's made of something material or immaterial. Uh. So on the functional, or more computer-oriented view, people may be material if there isn't any immaterial stuff. But it won't be because it, it, uh. the material aspect won't be the, the essence of it. It will be the function. The view, but then there's a third view of the mind, the physicalist view, which says that uh, the mind, or at least with respect to consciousness, the brain secretes consciousness the way a gland secretes a hormone. On that view, we're essentially material. So the, 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 the question maybe can be divided into two big parts. One is, is it material or immaterial? And then if it, is it material? Is it essentially material right. mm -hmm. or, or is it not essentially material? That, right. And in that case, the, the material could be expressed in a lot of different ways because it's the function that right. makes sense. That's right. So uh, how can we make progress on this, especially between the two very broad categories? Uh, the common assumption among neuroscientists is that we are material because what is immaterial is not subject uh, can't be studied scientifically, or maybe it doesn't exist. You can't prove it doesn't exist, but because we can't study it, therefore, uh, I'm going to assume it doesn't exist. Is that a legitimate position? Well, if you look at the last 20 years of the science of the mind, I think what you find is that neuroscience has made huge progress. And that gives us some reason to think that, the, um, the neuro, that, that consciousness is some kind of something neural or at least something physical where the neural is one, uh, um, uh, one way that that can be realized. Um, computer science and AI has made no progress on um, the science, of, the, of, science mm -hmm. of consciousness, so that gives us some reason to think that's the wrong approach, that we shouldn't think of um, science, should, shouldn't think of consciousness as something functional. Of course, neuroscience is computational neuroscience, and so there are computations involved, but it really does look like at least at the moment, that the substrate is really important. To the extent that, the, the, that, um, that this scientific approach um, um, pans out, then dualism looks less and less promising. And your view personally would be that it is highly likely, if not almost certain, that the person is all material. Yes. Okay, now... I also think the person is probably essentially material. Okay, fine. So you're really in that camp. Now, yeah. there are some smart philosophers, maybe some friends of yours, uh, who uh, are not particularly religious. In fact, some of them may claim to be atheists, yeah. who fundamentally believe that the person is not material, that there's something uh, fundamentally irreducible about consciousness, yeah. number one, or fundamentally unknowable, that it is impossible in principle to really understand the, the phenomenal aspect. Those are two yeah. different views, but come two to the same views. conclusion. Yeah. That, that the person is either not material or we can't know. Yeah. So those people have advanced arguments for their views. I don't find their arguments persuasive. Um, the argument, the, the, the main argument for dualism has been an argument from the conceivability of zombies and other kinds of uh, creatures who... Um, a, a zombie a being... A zombie being someone who... Uh, uh, who's, oh, this zombie being someone who is um, physically just like us, but nobody home, no, no consciousness. No inner life. No inner life. Um, some people say those are conceivable and therefore possible. Um, I think 
They, and if that's true, then something has to be added to the physical to right. make the internal. That's right. I think they're conceivable in the sense of consistently describable, but I doubt that they're possible, and I don't think the argument from conceivability to possibility works. So basically what you're saying is if you put all the things that you need to create all the elements of consciousness, you're going to have the inner life. Yes. If you get all of them. If yes. you leave one out, you may not. That's but right. if you get them all, yeah. you're going to have consciousness. Yeah, and the right. other argument says that you won't. That's right. That you can have everything in the physical world into this simulated human being. Yeah. And it'll act it, it'll say it's conscious, it'll report everything, but yeah. it won't be conscious. And the other kind of argument you mentioned is the argument that we'll never know. Right. Here, I just think we, uh, we don't have a good argument that we'll never know. Um, I think you know there are problems that we do not see how to solve, but that is a far cry from we'll never know. Well, you know, it's fair to use that argument when we're dealing with physics or chemistry, but, but consciousness, you have to admit, is something a little bit special because it seems impossible, even in principle, to figure out how you could even know whether another mind is, is conscious or, or, or another, I mean, we do it by analogy because I, 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 you, you're kind of like me and so I think you, you're pretty much like me inside, uh -huh. but with, a, with, a, with something physical and not in, 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 as, as a robot or, or in silicon, right. I'm not going to have that same analogy. So I understand right. that. But the question is, in principle, it seems impossible to really make that absolute determination. It's, well, not, a, it's not a simple science. Yes, it's not, it's not simple. Um, you know, the, we have to remember, though, the history uh, here, the, the historical analogy that's often brought up in this kind of context is the, um, uh, the issue of life. People could not conceive of how life could be something biological. Then they learned to conceive it. To conceive it, you need the right concepts. We have not got the right concepts now, but my hope is that we will develop them.